You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. First topic is going to be Zillow again. We've talked about Zillow multiple times in the past, and it seems like more and more news comes out every day about Zillow and different lawsuits and different things that they're trying to do. So recently, Zillow launched Zillow Home Loans. Now, many people don't know that Zillow recently bought Mortgage uh, Lenders of America and are rebranding that to Zillow Home Loans. And this is a whole new product that they're offering What's your take on this? Are people going to use Zillow home loans? I mean, it really, really depends on the performance and speed of the loan and how well they underwrite. Um, basically, what they've gotten into is the uh, wh- warehouse line market, where they're going to go ahead and make loans on one to four unit dwellings on, that are, and fall into the whole RESPA requirements with the whole uh, idea of securitizing loan and selling it on the secondary money market later on. Um, it really depends. If if they take into consideration and use the same team from the uh, from the company they actually bought, then they could potentially have some relative success with it. Again, my, my main thing when I hear of Zillow and loans is that uh, Zillow is kind of known for overvaluing their properties uh, and kind of creating a little bit of a hype. So when you're going to be um, overvaluing a property and then turning around and making a loan against it, you're kind of discrediting yourself as a lender because if you have an overvaluation, and you then you might be over leveraged when you make the loan, and if things go bad, then you could be left holding the bag. And that's going to be very interesting because at what point will someone sue them for making a loan based on a Zestimate valuation that was completely off, and now the property is not worth that much, and we're looking at a possible recession here coming up right. in the next few years, and if that happens, Zillow could be setting themselves up for a very big problem, but it's not a surprise – that they've well, started this. You know, I, I, when I first heard it, I kind of thought, well, isn't that a bit of a conflict of interest? Yeah, exactly. Right? Especially since they're valuing properties and then now they're mainly making a loan on it. But and- this is not a surprise because Zillow has been looking for ways to reduce their losses. I mean, to date, they haven't been profitable as a company. Now, what's interesting is that their revenues went up in 2018 from 2017, 29%, which is amazing, but their losses went up. Their actual oh. losses are a hundred million dollars for the year. I wonder what they're spending their money on. I mean, you got to remember it costs a lot of money to call up those agents to tell them yeah. that they have a special deal for them. No, absolutely. Well, I, I know that some of my own agents here in the office actually subscribe to Zillow. Again, for those of you uh, that don't understand the Zillow business model, uh, they they procure clients for basically sellers who are interested in going in and looking what the value of their home is. And usually if you're looking to see what the value of your home is, it means that you're interested in potentially selling your home. So these leads are sold back to real estate agents. They've also got a buyer interface so they can capture leads and sell them to agents. And it really depends on the quality of those leads. Uh, there's the whole feedback or review process of uh, Zillow agents and you know they trump this up a lot. And then from this, they go and they, you know, they market to real estate agents to sell advertising uh, dollars. Yeah, and, and that revenue that they've been generating has been going up, and they're pretty aggressive with their sales tactic. But at the end of the day, their profits are lost. And now with them being a publicly traded company, uh, there's a lot of pressure from shareholders to make sure that they turn a profit and eventually become profitable. And that's what they're struggling with. And the big hype right now are the iBuyers like Open Door, And that's one of the reasons why Zillow went out and purchased a mortgage lending company yeah. and why they're now branding it as Zillow Home Loans yeah. to take advantage of that hype and that type of business model. But the one thing that we know with big corporations is it's not that easy to switch your completely – different uh, business model to a different business model. It's just not that easy. And then shareholders don't like right. it. That's additional pressure on fact, you to I was just going to say that whole balance of pleasing your shareholders and making sure your profits are actually reported properly and not overinflated, that becomes a huge balancing act whenever you go publicly traded. Especially when you're when you have when you put yourself in a situation where you can create that potential conflict of interest, and, and real quick too, also in the Zillow world, they're facing two new lawsuits now. One basically uh, stating that they've been hiding and modifying Zestimates <clears throat> for big brokerages, and this is going to tie into, I think, the lawsuit 
with the MLS and the top brokerages. And then they're also facing discrimination lawsuits against discrimination in their listings because hmm. in some rentals, when you look at ads, some people will put, I will only rent to Caucasian or I will only rent to Latino people. <laughs> wow. And, and so because of that – I actually didn't even see that in any of the Zillow ads. But I guess that – you know. Yeah, wow. I mean – and it, it does happen. And at what point does Zillow become uh, – <clears throat> have to step in to regulate that and that's what this lawsuit is going to cover and facebook just recently went through uh their own discrimination lawsuit which forced them to completely change the ad uh campaign platform for when whenever you're advertising rental and homes for sale 